Colonel O'Neill? Lucy, I'm home. I am not Lucy. Sup ninjas, with the introduction to Lusanaga Kuga, aka Lucy, we got a powerful alternate build option that harkens back to the old evasion mantle from world playstyle with Lucent's new set. The core setup of the build today can be used on any weapon with some flexibility, so how far you can take it depends on your charm and armor augments. But today I'm just going to show you a longsword and bow version with some budget and max augmented versions so you can see what can be possible. But first, let's cover Lucent's set. Lucin is the last of the four new monsters you fight, and you have to be Master Rank 10 to start fighting them. Unfortunately, its armor still looks booty. They didn't bother even trying to update it to be unique, which was disappointing. It's just a color change. But we're not here for looks, we're here for skills, and Lucin has got two of the most interesting skills out of this update. Sneak Attack and Adrenaline Rush. Sneak Attack gives you 5, 10, and 20% attack increase when hitting the back half of a monster. In other words, backstab damage. So this is mainly good against Tails for the most part. I know the English version says 12% for the level 3, but Japanese have confirmed it's actually 20% for the final level 3, which is pretty insane, although pretty situational, so I don't think it's worth chasing beyond a build specifically meant to cut Tails, but very neat regardless. Imagine if they had one for hitting the head with blunt damage. Hammer users would cream their pants, but the main skill the Mirage build revolves around is Adrenaline Rush. As said, like Evasion Mantle from World, this gives you an attack buff when you perfect dodge an attack or roar. Up to a whopping 30 attack and the buff lasts 30 seconds, so a very long time just for a simple dodge. So this enables you to get a dereliction-like attack buff, except immediately to 30 unlike dereliction, which has to build up over time to 25 or 35 attack at level 3. But Rush is way safer at full life since the armor also includes level 3 evade window as well. This also means that Bubbly Dance works great in tandem with Adrenaline Rush, which after evading a few times, you activate Bubbly, to then max out your evade window iframes, and combined with Resuscitate, you can get 20 more attack on top. However, level 3 Bubbly is pretty expensive, so you will likely need a super good charm and augments to make it worthwhile, if you want a lot of extra skills for your specific weapon. But as you can see, with Bubbly, you can easily dodge most things as long as they don't persist for too long. Example, a Diablos Rush without Extender 3, you might not iframe the whole body dodging directly towards it, meaning you'll still get hit. But this was with level 2, and you can position and dodge at an angle instead so you can get out of the hit zone faster. But with Longsword, you can dodge even with Sacred Sheet stance, and the frames are super generous with Bubbly. But here is the bare minimum template if you plan to build around this skill. Lucy Gloves, Scorn Waist, and Lucy Goosey Legs. You get 30 attack from Rush, and 15 from Mail on Red Scroll. So this just replaces Dereliction basically. So these three pieces are locked generally, unless you truly don't want Hell Mail. From here you can add on Arc or Swords Chest for Bloodlust, which handily brings Resuscitate level 2, and the Helmet is the main spot to be flexible with for key skills you need, or something like Archfiend for general slots. So, starting with Longsword, this is going to use Lucent Sword for thematic reasons, but seems to be pretty competitive raw-wise to the meta, with 330 raw, innate purple sharpness, and poison. Only 10 attack less than Flicker, but without 25 negative crit. And the main attractiveness is the slots. Level 4 and 2 is a huge deal and can max out skills like Protective Polish or Quick Sheave now with the new level 4 decos and more. So it should be better than Flicker in that regard, although not as comfy without having to deal with that sharpness. The only requirement is that you have to augment for a slot upgrade to get level 2 Rampage Decos, as you want the anti-species to match the damage other swords can do. So here is the build. With Lucent Sword, you got three directions, Protective Polish, Grinder S, or Blade Scale Hone. We can't do Grinder S because we have Handicraft, which is going to make it not so good, and since we're dodging anyways, we're going to go Blade Scale Hone, which has a chance to increase your sharpness on dodge, keeping you in purple without the need to sharpen. However, for the budget with a QS2 22 charm, you only have room for level 1, which is a 50% activation time. So for augments, you want to augment hone on loosened arms and legs specifically. 
not on the other pieces, as if you're going to dodge around, you might as well use Lucid Set, right? So you want those effects on those pieces, in case you want to use like Hellmel for something else. But with Blade Scale level 2 or 3, you can upkeep your sharpness way better. But the build gives you Bubbly Dance, Resuscitate level 3, Evade Extender level 2, and with all the attack increases combined, you're looking at around 87 raw attack before overcoming Bloodlust, just from armor effects, and before sneak attack is factored. Because you don't get 100% crit though, I'd advise bringing a rousing roar cat with you to have that 30% crit chance occasionally, which combined with your bloodlust activation and wex, does get you 100% crit. Now, what would a non-modded, decently possible augmented setup look like? Enter Mirage Maxed. With a god charm for Bubbly, this uses the new Gold Rathian helmet to get Foray and Chain Crit which is 5 to 10 more attack from chain crit, and then 10 attack from foray. With 2 blade scale augments, 2 crit boost augments, and 1 foray augment, one per each piece of armor, I get level 2 foray for 10% more affinity when the monster is blighted, which not only includes your poisons, but also blights from rides that monsters sometimes cause, cats with the endemic life, or even the bugs on the walls from wall bangs, making you have a decent uptime in tandem with your poison. I can also reach blade scale level 3 for 100% activation rate, and I have enough room for a level 2 crit draw for my sacks to crit more consistently. Gold Helmet also has status trigger on perfect dodge, amping our poison potential. So that's what you can get with augments. It did suck balls rolling this though. Very boring. Even with the save scum method. And lastly, Bow. Adrenaline Rush does proc with Dodge Bolt, making this an amazing setup to run, I think, if you don't want Dereliction. I don't think Bubbly Dance is needed, Evade Window 3 on Dodge Bolt is fine enough, and Resuscitate can still proc off Bloodlust or any other status every monster now causes on you when they hit you, so it's fine not having it. This uses Hermitar's Bow, as it has many slots, 340 Raw, and Decent Element to make it a great overall bow. For weapon augments, your choice, go all in on element or do one affinity and one attack. Now for this budget, you are going to want to augment one blade scale and one extender. Otherwise, you won't have those in the build, but you can do an alternate build without Hellmel, getting you those skills in water attack alongside sneak attack level 2, resuscitate level 2, and critical element level 2. But you lose chain crit, resentment, and obviously the fitting attack from Hellmel, your choice. And lastly, a budget raw rapid in case you don't like spread. Here is one using Harbinger Bow, since it doesn't need Mighty Bow Plus and saves a level 4 effectively. You will need to augment one blade scale and one extender, or you can just think of it as, of these skills available, you need to augment two level 2 skills here. So either crit boost, surge, blade scale, etc. And these use 4 shot jewels, not wrap it up. My bad on the raw meta video, I can't read. <laughs> But yeah, that is the build idea. Adrenaline Rush has the potential to be meta. If not level 3, then 2 at least in Bow's regard. For Longsword, the dodging doesn't make too much sense as you can just counter, right? So I think this is more effective for other weapons than Longsword, but it's still fun to have yet another option to ignore a monster's attack. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like the video. Comment down below for the algorithm what new builds or weapons you guys are using. I have a Safe Scum Augment Guide video if you want to have an easier time to get augments, but make sure to read the pinned comments as there's new info on the augment table data. And last but not least, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos for more Sunbreak epicness.